G'day everyone. Uh, welcome to the mini lecture for GLS station 3 and 4 uh, about spinal imagery. So the learning objectives for this uh, mini lecture, we're going to look at the C-spine rules, the Canadian and Nexus. We're going to look at dermatomes and myotomes and cover three incomplete cord syndromes. So this is just a picture of the spinal um, vertebrae. There's seven cervical, 12 thoracic, and five lumbar. If you just think of meal times, that'll help you remember the number. So 7 a.m. have breakfast, 12 a.m. or 12 p.m. lunchtime, and 5 p.m. is an early dinner. So the C-spine rules. If someone comes in um, after trauma and they've got neck pain, the decision you need to make is whether you, there could be a fracture and whether you need a CT or an X-ray of the neck to, um, to see if there is a fracture there. So there's the Canadian C-spine rules, which is this one here. Um, I'll let you have a look through in your own time, but uh, there's high risk factors, low risk factors, and range of motion. And if you've got any of these features, then you need imaging. Then there's the Nexus C-spine rules. Now there's five criteria. Uh, if I go to the next page, I'll show you this. So the way to remember Nexus is with NSAID. So if, if the patient has neurological deficit, spinal tenderness in the midline, altered level of consciousness, intoxication, or distracting injury, if they have any of these, then again, you need to do some imaging. If they have none of these, then they are at low risk of having a, of a fracture. So this is a Canexus spine rules, or a combination of what we saw before, the Canadian, and combined with the Nexus. So step one, look at the mechanism of injury. If that's high risk, you need to do some imaging. Then do the NSAID, which is your Nexus criteria. And uh, if there's any of those, then you need to do imaging. Then step three, using your Canadian, part of your Canadian rule is get them to move their neck. And if they can move their neck without any pain, then um, then you know, you've cleared their C-spine clinically and you can take off their collar and you don't need any imaging. So some of the differences between Nexus is that it has distracting injury, alcohol intoxication and altered level of consciousness, which the Canadian rules do not. And the Canadian rules incorporate mechanism of injury, older age and neck rotation. These are three things that the Nexus does not include. So that's why the Conexus rules, a combination of both, is what, what I use in clinical practice. Dermatomes and myotomes. Oh my goodness. What a nightmare to try to remember. Um, so yeah, how on earth are you going to memorize these? And even when you do memorize it, you've forgotten it the next day. So you can look at this video, you know, a creative way of trying to remember dermatomes and myotomes. Um, I think the take-home message to remember dermatomes is to have key landmark points, so like C4, C7 up to heaven, uh, your nipple is T4, and belly button T10. So have those key, memorize those key landmarks, and then you can fill in the gaps between them um, to help you get the full picture of the dermatomes. And same with the lower limb. Again, a few key landmarks. L2 is your two pockets. So if you put your hands in your pockets, that's where L2 is. L3 is the medial knee. L4 is medial malleolus. L5, first web space. And S1, the lateral foot. Now, upper limb, you can see like this myotomes dance. Um, I just, for the upper limb, I just think of four, C4, 5, shoulders high. C5, 6, pick up sticks. C7, 8, lay them straight. T1, abduction. And that just covers the main uh, myotomes. And the lower limb, I just have three things that I try to remember. 2, 3, 4, kick to score. 4, 5, keep that bug alive. So that's standing on your heels. And 1, 2, ballet shoe. And that's tippy toes. Um, this is just reiterating the same thing. L4 is your medial malleolus. L5 is your first web space. S1 is the lateral foot. So, incomplete cord syndromes. So a complete cord syndrome is when you have complete uh, 
disruption of all the spinal tracts. So incomplete means there is some sparing of the nerve fibers, and so you can have patchy, some motor deficit, some sensory deficit, but it's not complete. So this is just looking at the spinal cord diagrams. This is the back and this is the front. And I've tried to identify three of the major tracts I want you to know. And the corticospinal, which is motor, will be a yellow triangle. Dorsal columns, which is vibration, proprioception, will be blue. And spinothalamic tracts will be red. So on the next slides, you can follow those colors along. So spinothalamic is pain and temperature. So again, you can see here, corticospinal, which is your motor, is in this location. Spinothalamic is down the bottom, and posterior columns or dorsal columns are at the back. So how can you remember, remember these tracts? Um, I found having a, thinking of the, looking at this in the middle here, it looks like the Batman symbol. So if you look at the Batman symbol, Batman's ears, Bats use ears for echolocation, and which is uh, vibrations through the air. So that's your dorsal columns for vibration. Batman's wings are powerful and strong. So that's where your motor function from your corticospinal tracts. And then your batarang, which is the thing that Batman throws and stabs into the bad guys, causes them pain. And so the spinothalamic tracts that cause pain are at the bottom part of uh, the Batman symbol. Important to recognize your motor fibers are coming down from the brain to the spine. So that's why it's called corticospinal, cortex to spinal, corticospinal tract. So those are motor fibers coming down the cord, whereas your sensory pathways are going from the body up to the brain. And if you think of spinothalamic, so that's your pain fibers, it's going from the spine to the thalamus, the thalamus being in the brain. So, so spine to brain sensory fibers. And so your dorsal column and your spinothalamic are both sensory pathways going up to the brain. Now, it's important to recognize where these tracts cross. To keep it simple, the corticospinal and dorsal columns both cross at the medulla, whereas the spinal tracts cross at the level of the spinal cord. And this is useful when you're learning about brown saccade syndrome. Um, you can look at this in your own time, but corticospinal tracts cross at the medulla, dorsal columns cross at the medulla, but the spinothalamic tracts cross at the level of the spinal cord. So, I want you to know three incomplete cord syndromes. Anterior cord, brown saccad, central cord. And I've got three stories to tell you about three patients for each of these cords. So, A is for alcoholic Amy. She's got anterior cord. Now, Amy's had a car accident and now she's a paraplegic, but she can still feel her purring cat at home. So Amy is a young person's name. So it's usually a young person um, who's been involved in an MVA and has a hyperflexion injury of the neck as the car stops suddenly. And this results in an anterior spinal artery injury. Um, the other situation is in diving injuries often result in anterior cord. So She's damaged the anterior part of her cord, um, so her spinothalamic tracts have been injured. So she has no pain sensation in the lower limbs. Now, this diagram isn't quite as accurate. This is from Rosen's, but in, often what happens is you get up here damaged too, and this is your corticospinal tracts. So these people often are paraplegics or have, um, you know, both legs unable to move. But the important thing is their vibration columns, the dorsal columns here, are still intact. And that's why Amy can still feel her cat purring. And this is a picture of the anterior spinal artery area which is injured. So the lateral corticospinal tract and your spinothalamic tracts. Bad Barry. So B is for Bad Barry um, and he has brown saccade syndrome. He's escaped from prison, was stealing a car, and got stabbed in the left back. And this is his area of injury. Now, he is, his left leg is paralyzed, um, but his right leg is numb. Now, how does that happen? 
Well, it's to do with, remember how we talked about the spinothalamic tracts crossing at the level of the spinal cord. So that is how the, the fibers, have, the pain fibers cross over at the level of the spinal cord. And that's why the opposite leg, so if he's stabbed in the left, it's actually the right leg that gets loss of pain and temperature sensation. But the motor fibers are on the left, so the left leg has no motor function and no vibration or proprioception on that same leg that he's stabbed in. But it's the right leg that is numb. And so he can still move his right leg, but he's got no pain sensation there. So that's brown saccade. Last one is clumsy Calvin. He's got central cord. Calvin's had a fall, and he can no longer lift his wheelie walker with his arms. So the key feature of central cord syndrome is you have upper limb weakness greater than lower limb. Now Calvin's an old person's name. So the classic patient is an old person with a degenerative spine and often has pre-existing cervical canal stenosis. So the mechanism of injury is usually a fall forward. He face plants and has a hyperextension of his neck. And that causes injury to the central area of, of the spinal cord. So how can he have upper limb weakness more than lower limb? Well, it's to do with the way the motor fibers are located in the corticospinal tract. So if you look at here, the cervical and upper limb nerves are closer to the center, where the sacral and nerve um, lumbar plexus uh, peripheral nerves come off um, in the periphery. So if you have damage in the middle, your upper limb fibers are damaged more than the lower limb. So in summary, alcoholic Amy has anterior cord. It's usually a hyperflexion injury, a young person with paraplegia, but still intact vibration uh, sensation. B is for brown saccade, bad barry. It's usually a stabbing, a hemi section, a hemi transection of the cord, and they have the ipsilateral or the same side leg uh, weak, but the opposite leg is numb. Central cord is usually older people with a hyperextension injury and they have upper limb weakness greater than lower limb. That's the end of the mini lecture. Enjoy doing the, uh, the, the mini quiz. Have fun!